So hey, it actually finally got to me. I ordered this back in September, so it took a while to actually arrive, but I've been just seeing some videos back then and the reviews for this system are pretty high. One that actually stood out was a review by Retro Dojo, who's fellow UK base, and he gave this a 9.5, and it's been named the 2020 portable device. Now personally for me, I really love modern the PlayStation Classic and also the Mega Drive Mini. I'll put that in the description below if you want to check them out, but hopefully I can bring that experience over from them to a portable device. So the Retroid Pocket seemed like the ideal choice to go for because the reviews are pretty awesome with this system. So let's go ahead now over into an unboxing and show you what more this actual device can do. So here we have the actual delivery. Let's give this an open. Now let's open this up and we got a box in a box. And I'm pretty excited to jump into this with you guys because as I've been saying, the reviews on this has been pretty sweet. And I'd love to try and get this optimized to actually run all my retro games on the go. So what we got here, we've got a micro C to USB converter, which is really nice. And then we've got our HDMI output cable. So there's a micro adapter, as I can show you here. There we are. So then that will go into the console and then you got your HDMI out into the actual TV. And I'm pretty intrigued about what actual quality we can get out of this system. So I'm really impressed with the packaging design. Actually, it takes off what design you actually got your console. So if you head to their website, you can actually see all the variants you can actually choose for your handheld to be. So let's open this up. Let's see what we got all together. Oh, there's a console. Anything else? No, nothing else. So we got all this here. So let's show you now what we get. So we've got the console itself. And we got a manual, because that's what guys do. We read manuals before we use the actual product. Isn't that right? Well, that's just a quick look, because I don't want to do this. Let's put that aside. What else we got? Oh, we got our warranty. And we've also got a micro C cable. We all know what that is. And then we got some replacement buttons. So if you're not happy with them, you can actually replace them to color buttons. And here we have the Retroid Pocket 2. So I went with the black design with the black buttons with the color actual letters. So on the case of the back here, it's only just got the actual name. It's very smooth texture on the back. It's, um, it's not that much of a cheap plastic feel. It's a bit more of a premium feel with this product. And at the base, we got the SD card slot. So you can always upgrade the SD card and then you got your headphone jack which I really enjoy having one of those headphone jacks. On the side, yeah, there's not much else to design. It's a very smooth curved effect and also comes with a screen protector. I thought that was a really nice touch with this actual product. And do I actually put the colored buttons in? Uh, I'm not sure, but let's give this a boot. This has taken quite a while, but to be honest, it took around about 30 seconds, under a minute easily. So here we have what it is booted up. The first things first I always do with Android devices is always see the Easter egg within the Android system. And I've never had a Marshmallow device. Let's see what we got here. So you can do this on all Android devices if you fancy checking that yourselves. So we just give an extra click and then we got a, another game. This is another bonus game you can actually get with your system. So it's, yeah, it's like a Flappy Bird game. So as I did state earlier with the build quality, it is pretty nice. It's not that cheap Chinese plastic type of feel. It does have a nice bit of a premium type of quality. It probably could be a little bit better to reach that standard that you get with Sega or Nintendo products like the Nintendo Switch. And the buttons I would say are almost the same as a Nintendo Switch quality. Uh, they could be a little bit bigger for my liking and uh, probably a bit more spongier, but um, they do a really good job. The actual triggers are really nice and responsive. So I do really enjoy that. The D-pad itself is really good. It probably could have a bit of a different type of texture on it to have a bit of a grip pad like the Sega Mega Drive D-pad. That's always been a personal favorite D-pad of mine. And the analog sticks itself, they don't actually click no L3 or R3. So that's a bit of a shame that could actually give two um, functional buttons as well that you could probably play around with with the menu system and things like that. So that's a bit of a shame they don't have those buttons, but do use them often. 
um, it's up to the player really. This R3 stick is a little bit slightly lower than the actual L3. So you can see, so as you're fitting this in a pocket, this would fit in more nicely and this will stick out a bit. But as this is the more primarily used analog stick, this is a really good function for that. But for this, I have been having struggles with some type of, or well, any games using this, but that's something I will look into later on. And the start buttons, they're, they're really nice and responsive. So I'm really happy with the build quality of this. Some little touches could really add to a bit of a get better experience for the gamer. But to be honest, and we've got these um, connector ports here, micro C, so that's a really good standard. And then we got our micro HDMI out. So we're pretty excited about the build. So once you are booted up, you are greeted with Android 6.0. So there's a very old version, but it has a lot of this to play with. But what I recommend and what the actual product recommends is installing the Retroid front end software. So to do that, you want to open your menu, scroll down to the bottom and open toolbox. Then it says install the app. Once you've done that, you then open the app and then this will then make Retroid be the first thing it boots up. So once you've turned it off, turn it back on, you go straight into here and then that's how you access all the pre-built games and also the library that they include online on their service. So with the Retroid Pocket front end, it does give you a lot of options to play with. The first thing I recommend you doing is holding down the home button and then you can access the, you can access a lot of game settings as well, but don't jump into that unless you're a bit more experienced. But for the handheld settings, you can change your Wi-Fi, so then you can access all the downloads and you've got Bluetooth settings, and you do have a lot to play with, so you can always customize to actually get the more beneficial gameplay with this actual device. So then when you've got your Wi-Fi already on, press the X button, and you can see different categories, and you can even search different types of games, and you've got your task management, which is like what games are downloaded and what's in, in and completed. So with the actual categories, you can see there's a lot to go for. For instance, with the PlayStation 1 games, you have access to 615 games. And then we go back and you've got N64 titles. So you have 84 games on here. That you can just download and run straight away with just a click of a button. That's what everybody wants. But for instance, with the Super Nintendo, it seems to be the servers are down with titles like that but you'll be able to search for titles and they'll still work with the download. So it is a bit problematic, but there's a way around things. So there's also DC games. So the compatibility is pretty good. I've tried a couple of games and they seem to be working right. And then there's one or two of them that I, I don't recommend actually going on. So it's all about trial and error of the system. But when it comes to games before the Dreamcast and the N64, it seems to be absolutely awesome. But to be honest, the N64 games that they provide have been running awesome with a few titles that I've actually tested. So let's boot up a game here. Let's just go for King of Fighters. So when you actually got this booted up for the first time, oh, let's turn this down. Actually, let's show you the sound quality. You get, whoa, you get a really decent volume out of this system. So this is an arcade title, so there's no menu or things like that. You just press select to add your coin. Gives you the button layout. Doesn't matter what I go, let's go for Terry B. Now let's show you the video output quality of the system. So the video output quality comes out as a 480p, it comes out really nice and clear and so does the sound quality is really good. It just depends on the actual emulation of the sound quality as well. But to be honest this is really good video output but I was put down because I thought there would have been a 720p output much like the PlayStation Classic or the Mega Drive Mini has and there's no actually thing to stop this unit from actually pumping out a 720p actual resolution because the actual processor and the RAM is basically identical to that of the PlayStation Classic. So that's a bit of a shame, perhaps an update when they bring us this 720p output, but this 480p is pretty awesome for now. 
One thing I just want to point out in this quick review and this quick hands-on with this Retroid Pocket 2 is the download service as well. So when you're running the Retroid OS, it is, I do find the actual downloads to be pretty slow, but the actual games work absolutely awesome and they provide you with so much stuff. And also when you actually purchase the actual unit, it does bundle with a lot of games already pre-installed. So if you do want to actually just purchase one of these and just pick up and go, I do recommend just installing the Retroid OS and carrying on from there. But for me, what I wanted to get out of the system was to use RetroArt because I really love the experience from the Mega Drive Mini and the PlayStation Classic. But to be honest, it is running Android 6.0 and I have to run that OS system and it's not really the most stable condition at the moment. It does run and it does provide you with some other stuff to actually help you actually play different games. But for me, I wanted to get the retro arc experience to the full capacity, but we have to wait to some updates. So the Retroid Pocket 2 is a very interesting handheld. I'm pretty excited about this purchase. I am gonna invest a lot more time trying to change the front end and trying to get some updates on the system. Now there's already an 8.1 of the Android software already out there. It's still in beta form, so it's not kind of recommended. But let me know in the comments box below if you've already done this and see if it's actually stable enough. But something I am looking forward to, I'm gonna be investing a lot more time in this system. So I'd just like to thank Retro Dojo again for actually putting this out and recommending this product. It is a pretty awesome handheld and I can't wait to get more out of this system. So I'd just like to say thanks for watching this video. And as always, if you like it, hit that button. If you want to support, click subscribe, leave your comments box below. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.